Okay, so we're ready to start our recipe. We're gonna just put everything into our bread machine pan, which is super easy to clean. And we always wanna start with our liquids first, okay? So again, I don't cook a lot of bread in the machine, but it's a great device for doing all your work and kneading. All you have to do is just take it out and shape your, shape your loaves or rolls or whatever. So these rolls we're making today are super simple and super delicious. Uh, my, I'm not even allowed to make anything else for bread at, at the holidays because people just always want these rolls. They are melt in your mouth, buttery delicious, and they're so easy to make. And it's nice to have him doing all the work while I'm doing other things, especially when I'm making the holiday meal. So I'm gonna put everything just layering right in my bread machine pan. And um, we wanna start with our liquids first. So the first thing we're going to need is one cup of water. So you need a one cup measure um, that, uh, or you know, the ability to measure one cup of liquid. And we want our water to be warm, warm to hot, but not too hot or we kill the yeast. Yeast is a living thing. Not too cold or it won't activate. So we just want it at that nice uh, temperature. You could take the temperature, but I just kind of stick my finger in and see. So we're going to need two uh, tablespoons of softened butter. And if you didn't think ahead, you could just pop it in the microwave for like 20 seconds. Um, but, or you could leave it on the counter if you are thinking ahead. All right, so I've got my uh, cup of water. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in my bread pan first. Put the stuff out of the way here. Simply pour it in. Then I'm going to take my two tablespoons of butter and go ahead and dump that in. Try to get as much of that goodness in there as possible. If you don't want to use butter, you can go ahead and use olive oil or something like that, but I like butter um, and it's not very much butter there. So, okay, so we've got our, our warm water, our butter. Our next step, I've got my eggs here. These are some nice cage-free large eggs. This is what I do to crack an egg. Um, on the long side of the egg, I just make a nice crack. Stick my thumbs in and push them in like I'm going to open a book. All right, so we've got water, our butter, and our egg. Now it's time to put our dry ingredients in. I'm gonna use some bread flour. The toss like that. I get mine from King Arthur. I always use King Arthur flour. That's just my preference. Use whatever you have. We're going to put three and one fourth cup of flour. We'll do the scoop method. So we scoop and level, put it in our pan, which is off camera right now. That's number one, this is number two, and this is number three. Then our little quarter cup measure, same thing, just like so. So now we've got, I don't want to tip it too much because I want my layers to stay that way. We're just leveling that out a little bit. So now we have our flour layer. We're going to add some salt. If you could make the switch, try to use coarse salt. Um, you'll have a lot less sodium problems and um, it's just a lot better than table salt. Uh, in my opinion, anyway. Or use what you have, but I'm using a little bit of coarse salt. Brings out the flavor in things. And then we want to go ahead and put some sugar. Now yeast, of course, is a living thing and it feeds off the sugar. So I'm just going to use some granulated sugar. Uh, unbleached, I'm going to use my same quarter cup measure. No need to scoop and measure with that. Um, you just wiggle it off. And then just sort of dust it over the top. Like so. Then I'm going to use some bread machine yeast. It's a little quicker acting yeast. Three teaspoons. So you simply put it right on top. And we don't want to mix this at all. We're going to let the bread machine do it all. So one, two, three. All right, and just like that, uh, without 
doing anything else to it, we're going to open it up and put it into our machine. It just simply snaps into place. I kind of give it a tug to make sure it's in, pull down the handle, close the door, turn it on. <laughs> it's really hard stuff. And um, it has a dough cycle on there. So the dough cycle is what you want to use here. For mine, it's 11 years is probably going to be different. Okay, the dough has been in my bread machine for an hour and a half. I see it in the pan right here, and I deflated it a little bit. It was very poofy. Um, and I'm just going to turn it out onto, I have a sheet pan, just like a sheet tray lined with parchment paper, also from King Arthur Flower. It comes in these pre-cut sheets, which is really handy. And I'm just going to turn it out. Give it a good shake. And then we're just going to cover it and let it rest for about 10 minutes. Okay, the dough has arisen and it's nice and puffy and I'm just going to use a bench scraper to divide it up into about 15 rolls or so. And if it gets sticky, you can just put flour on your hands. It's a very soft dough, so it's fine to put some flour on there. You don't want it sticky. Alright, so we're going to divide these into rolls, so I kind of just divide it in half like so. And then I just keep dividing each section in half until I have the appropriate amount that I would like. Now you could shape this dough into many other things, but today we're making rolls. And make another half of each. You just take the dough and you sort of wrap around like that until we form a nice sort of tufted mushroom top look. And then you just put it down. And you do that with all of the dough. Sorry about my washing machines going. <laughs> We've been gone and I had to do some laundry, so a little background noise there. has risen once in the bread machine. The bread machine takes care of the mixing, the kneading, and one of the rises. That's what that hour and a half encompasses. Um, so we only have one more rise to go, and it's a rather quick one. It's 30 to 40 minutes, depending on your conditions and time of year it is. I, to, to give a nice little warm, draft-free environment, I usually put my stove on 200 for like a minute, and then I shut it off, and that gives enough hot air to do a great job uh, with my dough. You don't want to leave it on 200, okay? We're not baking, I already did that one. Um, so yeah, so once you have them all like this, we are going to take our same um, little cloth and just put it over and put it in the oven just like this. Okay, they have risen and they're nice and fluffy. So I've got my oven preheated 375 and we're just going to put them in the middle rack right now. Alright, okay, and they cook really quickly, just about 12 minutes and we'll be good to go. Okay, it's been 12 minutes and I'm gonna go ahead and get my mitts on. And they should be a little bit golden brown. And they are. Alright. Alright, looking beautiful. Hear that? That's a sign of correctly baked bread when it kind of taps and there's that hollow sound. So, we also need, we're going to brush on some um, nice melted butter. So I've got a silicone uh, brush and I've got some melted butter here. My camera, other camera is being used so I'm kind of hand holding this. And you simply want to brush on the melted butter. And this will not only add a little bit more flavor, but it gives it a nice glistening look. 
and uh, to our um, otherwise more doll. You can see the difference like between that one and that one. We're going to love you. <laughs> so, um, though I'm not an incredibly gadgety person, um, a bread machine to me is one of those um, small appliances that I feel like adds help, especially if you're a mother of young children and um, need extra helping hands make this exact same recipe. This is a Betty Crocker dinner roll recipe and you can make the exact same recipe uh, traditionally by kneading by hand or in a KitchenAid stand mixer but according to King Arthur Flour they feel like the bread machine actually does the best job kneading as far as consistency and I've never had these turn out poorly. So when they are cool we will check it out.